Jeff, coming off a big win this week against Penn State to go 14-6, and six, taking second place in the Big Ten right now. Welcome to the show, Rutgers head coach Steve Peichel. Coach, these are exciting times on the banks. How are you today? Today we, we have a day off. I mean, not, not for me, but our players. Well earned day off um, yesterday uh, playing a good Penn State team too. So happy, like, like my team a lot. Love the energy, you know, in Jersey Mike's arena right now. And, uh, you know, if the league is a monster, we're going to, we got to get ready to go on the road to play, you know, a Philly guy uh, at Iowa, Fran McCaffrey, who's a, a great, great coach with a really good basketball team. So challenges keep coming, but um, excited where we are. All right. Well, you just mentioned Jersey Mike's arena uh, as somebody who grew up uh, right outside the shadow of Rutgers. The rack is someplace that is legendary to me. It's one of the arenas in the country. It's loud. It's raucous and it's got great basketball. Now, what's it like for you to play in the rack? Well, I will tell you, you know, it's changed a lot in my seven years. Um, I mean, when, when I took the job, Jim Calhoun, the UConn coach, who was my coach at Connecticut, said he thought the rack was one of the toughest venues to play in in his whole career. Um, and I was hopeful that we could get it back to that level. And uh, we really have the students come out. Um, it's, it's yesterday. There was a two hour, they were there two hours early. The line was all the way around, um, one of our diners here on campus, uh, around the corner. So it's become, you know, an exciting place. The students have come out and made it loud. I think some of the coaches in the league have already declared it one of the toughest places in the league, which, which has a lot of tough places to go play too. So, um, you know, just proud of that. And then, you know, Jersey Mike's has jumped on and, and you got some of the best sandwiches going too. So <laughs> guys come up, we're going to treat you, treat you well. You know, you mentioned coach Calhoun, you were a part of his first recruiting class. And, and he said of you, he was a leader. Clearly he was a leader. You had the chance to go play overseas after your own illustrious playing career, going to the tournament, you decided to take your opportunity to be an assistant with coach Calhoun. Can you talk about his impact on you and your coaching style? Well, I will tell you, I'm blessed in so many ways. Cause I was there year one, you know, I was part of his first recruiting class. We were last in the big East at the time. And I was able to grow uh, and see how he transformed a program. And my last year as a senior, you know, we were number one in the Big East, won the Big East championship for the first time, was number one seed in the NCAA tournament. So I actually got to live it as a player. And then I was blessed when he asked me to be on his staff and, and, and to stay on and to really learn behind the scenes. You know, as a player, you only get a little bit of what, what you get, but now to be in the meetings with coach Calhoun and to understand why he was doing the things he was doing and how he was coaching us and different methods that he uses. Um, and to still, to have him to this day, we talk all the time. Uh, he's an unbelievable guy to call when you're looking for advice. I mean, he, you know, three national championships, hall of fame coach. I mean, a, a hundred, you know, um, what seemed like a hundred big East championships and tournament championships and all the different things that he's been able to do. And, you know, I'm just blessed to have a mentor like him and, and he'll call me and he'll give me like the truth. You, you didn't play well today. Your team got to play better. You got to run more. You got to do this. And I just love it. Cause I know it's just coming from a place. There's no agendas with him. He just wants me to win. And he loves Rutgers. I know he's a UConn Husky forever, but I would say his second favorite team is, is, is the Scarlet Knights. So, I'm, I'm honored and, and, and that I have the ability to have a guy like that on my side. You got to witness firsthand as a player at UConn growing a program, winning the 1988 NIT, winning your first Big, Tech, Big East title, um, and, and going on to the tournament. What is it like now? What are the challenges that you have now as a coach that didn't exist then as far as what's going on with the transfer portal and how you build a team? Well, I mean, you know, the last few years have been unbelievably, you know, challenging when you start with COVID and then you add the portal and then, you know, now you're dealing with name, image and likeness, you, you know, and just overall um, kids mental health now with the social media and how that affects their lives, too. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, I always say there's a lot of alligators in the pond, you know, and you try to help your guys, you know, navigate um, all those obstacles. Uh, but you know, for me, I'm just an old school guy I still believe in kids come to college, you know, 
um, to get a degree and kids come to, you know, these great universities to have a great experience and, and to learn and to get better in basketball. And, and, uh, you know, I try to remind, even though you got the portal and you got all those different things, hopefully you treat, you know, the kids the right way, they get better. You know, we've graduated every kid since we've been here. I'm real proud of that. Um, I'm real proud that they are a part of our community here. They go to football games, they go to soccer games, they go to concerts, you know, I want them to enjoy college. And and I know always, you know, kids are in a hurry to get to that pro level. And, and sometimes I say, don't bypass some of the greatest years of your life, you know, with college and, and the different things that you learn from college. So there's many obstacles out there now. It's changed in my 32 years, but uh, I still believe in the true values of why you go to college and, and, and try to get kids better and, you know, have fun. Well, they clearly come there for you, too, along with the campus. And, you know, you you famously told A.D. Hobbs you'd walk the turnpike to get the job if that's what it took. And then you told the marketing department you'd do anything for them, including help students move into the dorms. Talk about building the community around the team and how you got that going. Well, I, I tell you, there's still a few kids, too, that I moved in the dorms that I know didn't come to games that year. So I got to track <laughs> those people down because that was the deal. If we moved you in, you got to come to a game. And, and uh, I met a few of them that year later. And I said, I'm not so sure that they had gone to games, you know, back in those days. But, uh, you, you know, I really believe it, it takes a whole community to have a good basketball program. It's never just a basketball coach. It's, you know, getting the students out. We have a riot squad, which is an unbelievable student group that comes to games. But, you know, you need your professors to come. You need the alums to come back. Um, you need the people that live here in, in Piscataway and Brunswick, you know, to come to games. So the more we can get out with our players and, and the more I can get out in the community and just let them know that, you know, we need their support. And, you know, that's a big part of this. And, um, you know, our band here is great and our cheerleaders, our dance team. I mean, they're so important to the environment in, in, in the gym, um, you know, and so everybody's important. Your academic advisor, your strength and conditioning coaches, the people that keep you healthy, um, you know, and the people that come to games. So it's never coaches get way too much, you know, credit for the stuff that everyone else is doing. And, um, you know, we got a lot of great people here at Rutgers. One of the reasons I took the job were the people. And now seven years later, it's 100 percent the people that make this a special place. The region that you're in is also a great place, in addition to New Jersey itself, and which has tons of athletes that you want to keep in in-house, in-state. And it's always been a struggle for Rutgers. You have Philadelphia and New York, you know, to your north and your south. What has it been like trying to recruit and to keep the the in-state stars and have them go to Rutgers and understand what a great school Rutgers is. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to get kids that want to be here and, and it doesn't always matter where the location is, but you got to find kids from all over the place. We especially want to do a great job in, in, in New Jersey. And, and we have, I mean, Paul Mulcahy, he's a great player for us. Ron Harper now is playing in the NBA for the Toronto Raptors. Cliff, is one of the best players ever to come out of the state of New Jersey. And now we have Derek Simpson. So um, they help bring other players too with them, but we still want to just get the right players. And I want to find unselfish kids that want to take on the task of raising Rutgers basketball. And, uh, you know, it, it's become a little bit, you know, people are listening a little bit more because we're graduating guys and guys are getting better. I mean, we're a huge program on developing guys and, we don't always get the 10 star kid or the 19 star kid. We find kids that, that fit our program that are tough and that want to get better and want to get a degree from a you know great university and, and play in a great conference. So um, we really try to track the right people again, you know, and who we recruit. And, um, you know, it's always nice when you can get a local kid to stay home and have his family enjoy his career too. I think that's a big part of it. And uh, we've been able to talk some really good ones into doing that. You know, you've mentioned a couple of times uh, during this interview and, and I've heard you before talk about how important education is and how important getting a degree is. How hard is it to to focus on that as a coach in addition to winning and in addition to the fact that kids are looking to, to go pro earlier? 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I've been a big believer of this in, in 32 years of coaching, and, and it won't change with the portal or with today's, you know, athletes. You, you know, the degree is the reason I'm here. I'm able to coach at Rutgers. And, you know, I thought I was going to play in the NBA for, you know, 10 years too. Um, I find out very quickly um, that that's not always the case, but your degree now will, will be able to take care of you and your family for a lot a lot longer. So I preach that. And even the kids that want to go early and leave, I want them to come back, you know, and finish up. We're, we're blessed. Quincy Doobie, one of our last first round draft picks, who was a great player here, just graduated the other day. So he came back and, and finished. And I'm so, you know, proud of him. Uh, what a great example of, 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 of a guy coming back and finishing. And now he wants to be a coach. Now he can get jobs at a lot of places, you know, with his degree. So, um, you know, we preach it and, and I believe in it. Um, and again, I want my guys, sometimes they're in a hurry to go where too. like, what are you in a hurry to go? You, you, you know, and you, you know, stay in college as long as, as you, as you can. And when you're ready for that next jump, that may be one year, that may be two years, that may be three years, but then come back and finish that degree. Cause that's the ultimate thing that you could do for yourself and, and for your family. You know, in addition to the academics, just on the, the culture that you've built off the court, you've had players use their voices and be involved in social change issues. They have their own community efforts. You run your own basketball camps where some of the players are. Can you talk about developing men who happen to play good basketball, too, and the culture that you've tried to build there? You know, I'm real proud of them. They've taken on every issue and they've gotten very involved in, with the community and um, you know, Paul Mulcahy, he started his own foundation as a freshman, you know, um, which, you know, he's done an unbelievable job with the Grateful Four Foundation. Um, but, you know, I encourage it. I, I think, too, it's their family and their upbringing. So I can't take any credit for it. They're great people. They're trying to make the world a better place. Um, and I think that's why, you know, Jersey Mike's is packed and, you know, we have lines for tickets and, you know, waiting list and all those kind of things uh, because the type of people they are. And, you know, 11 of my guys on my roster, current roster, are Dean's List students, too. And it's a great university. I mean, Rutgers has been a great university for a long time. We're now in, I think, is the best academic and athletic league in the country. You know, you got your Northwesterns and Michigans. These are elite academic institutions with the great athletics, too, that all of them have. Um you know, so I think I think there's just so many great things going on here and our players jump right in and they get involved in all these different worthwhile causes. How how important and how much does it help to be in the Big Ten for Rutgers? I mean, it's always the company you keep. And I, you know, when recruits come in here, I say, you know, like if you want to produce number one right now in the country and it's one of the great engineering schools. I mean, I, my daughter went to Northwestern. It's one of the great academic institutions. And, uh, you know, the Indiana's the world won five national championships and the Michigan's and the Ohio States and the Michigan States. It's always the company you keep. And we're in some elite company. It says a lot about Rutgers University and, and our university is still growing right now. I mean, it's really um, the facility itself has changed all over in my six years. Um, it's harder and harder every year to get into. Uh, this was the most you know, competitive admissions class in the history of Rutgers University. We've been around for a long time. You know, and I think that's part of the league that we're in now. I think that certainly says a lot about us, but also the great things that are happening here at both academically, research-wise, and, and athletically. You know, I wanted to talk about on the court, your, your team's identity, the, the aggressive identity that you have defensively, the toughness, the pressure with good size. Yes, you have some exciting offensive weapons, but you guys are holding teams to season lows when they play you. Can you talk about that mentality that you try and instill on the court with those players? Um, you know, I, just since day one, we tried to, you know, instill a mentality that we got to outwork and we got to defend and rebound at an elite level. Um, and we're lucky, you know, Caleb McConnell's the defensive player of the year in the big 10. And I think he could be the defensive player of the year nationally in the country. And Cliff is a shot blocker and Paul can play defense too. And these guys are tough. And uh, Mawat Mag, you know, who we recruited from California, prolific prep, but he's Australian uh, played behind Ron Harper for, two years and battled him every day. And, and, and people wonder how, why is he such a good defender? Well, when you have to guard Ron every single day, 
you know, you get pretty good. And now he's playing a lot and doing a great job. But, um, you know, I wanted to have an identity. I didn't think our basketball program had one. Um, and they've really embraced that identity. And now we got a lot of guys that, you know, are defensive player of the year caliber guys. And and I think they've seen what happens when you, you defend. And, and it also travels with you too. defense. You know, sometimes your jump shot just won't go in, but defense travels and, um, we've had success with it and I hope we continue that. You know, coach, we, we do a lot with uh, some of the coaches in the Philly area with coaches versus cancer. And one of the things that we've noticed is, is the fraternity of coaches. And you talked about how coach Calhoun still cheers you on and calls you all the time. What is it like to be part of that fraternity of coaches and the fraternity of coaches in the big 10? I mean, I, you know, I will tell you, I mean, you got some of the great coaches down, uh, Fran Dumpy down there at LaSalle. And I mean, Jay Wright and how he did it at Villanova. I mean, I learned so much from him and just watching him and did it the right way with class and, you know, just, you know, one of the great coaches and boy, my time down there, I was at George Washington university when Phil Martelli was, you know, number one ranked, you know, at St. Joe's and uh, you know, you just have, you know, terrific people. Um, and I was blessed when I first came into the big 10, I mean, John Beeline was in the league and Thad Mata was in the league and Tom Crane, who's an awesome guy. And, yeah, you know, like I've learned from all of those guys sitting in the room, but they're really good people. They they really are, and and that's what I've learned. You know, Fran McCaffrey, one of the great coaches, but one of the great people that that I've come across. And what a job he's doing at Iowa, and he did at Siena. I mean, he was unbelievable there. Um, you know, but just a great fraternity, you know, of, of, of really good people, and they're doing a lot of great things for their communities too. Whether it be coaches versus cancer or some of the other, you know. Uh, things that they're involved with. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a community that's very tight. We're all a phone call away and there's a lot of good people in it. Coach, we could keep talking to you all day, but we'll let you get back to prepping for the next game. Hope you enjoy this time of year. Can't wait to follow you through March madness and hope we get to talk to you again sometime. Guys appreciate it too. And and come up to Jersey Mike's. We'll take good care of you. We would love to. We definitely will. You have a great one, coach. Thank you. Appreciate you.